science in pajamas. Oh, yeah. All right, so welcome back. Today we're going to talk about metric conversions. Now, this is really important because in science, all measurements are done in metric. So it's really useful to know how to do metric conversions. And they're way easier than trying to do with the empiric form, empiric measurements, or whatever we use here in America. Because the way we do it is kind of weird. Uh, if you go from an inch, like one of the little fractions of an inch, to an inch, then you have 12 inches in a foot, and you have three feet in a yard. I don't even know how many yards there are in a mile. And it's just crazy. Like It's not consistent, what I'm saying. So it's really hard to convert between them unless you actually have it memorized how much of this is in that. Whereas with metric conversions, everything either increases or decreases by a factor of 10. So what that means is instead of trying to figure out these weird and wonky, all right, three feet in one yard, but how many yards are there in a mile? A lot more than three. You just increase and decrease by a factor of 10, which means you are moving the decimal place left or right. And that's all you're doing is moving the decimal in order to do the conversion, which is why it's so much easier. Um, so yeah, now we want to start off with our base unit. Now the base unit, now again, this is just the bare basics. Here are the smaller measurements, here are the bigger versions, and they go farther on each side. These are just the three closest to the base unit. So the three smallest directly after the base unit, the three biggest directly after the base unit. We haven't even got to mega, giga, tera on this side, or even like our micro, pico, nano on that side. So. We're only going to stay with the ones closest to the actual base unit for now. Now, a base unit is something like a meter, one second, a gram, a liter. So it's just that one thing. It's that standard measurement. So a meter is roughly about this big. Now, we can add prefixes to a base unit in order to talk about bigger or smaller versions of it. For instance, many of us have heard of a millimeter. Millimeters, oh, so much over tiny. It is big, as opposed to the meter. So there we go. So we have meter and we have millimeter. We also have kilometers. Those are much bigger than a meter. So how we would do this, and the kids always ask me, how do you, t using the symbols, how do you tell the difference between a base unit and, you know, something that's bigger or small? Very easily. If you only see one letter, it's a base unit. What I mean by that is, that is a symbol for meter. That is a symbol for a liter. That is a symbol for a second, and that is a symbol for a gram. So those are all of our base units that we're really going to touch on today. Now, if we want to talk about smaller versions of a meter, we can talk about the deci meter, which is one tenth. Let me make that a little bit bigger. One tenth the size of a meter. One tenth. We can talk about a centimeter. Centimeter, which is one one hundredth the size of a meter. Or we can talk about the millimeter, which is one one thousandth the size of a meter. Notice how we're doing that. One one tenth, one one hundredth, one one thousand. Notice again, we're just increase, or in this case, decreasing by a factor of ten. So meter, 
decimeter, centimeter, millimeter. And the nice thing is the prefixes don't change, nor do their meaning for any other base unit. So we can talk about a deciliter, a centiliter, or a milliliter. We can talk about a decisecond, centisecond, and millisecond. Now, if some of these don't sound familiar, that's fine. We don't necessarily use all of them in common measurements. We barely talk about a decimeter. We're familiar with centimeters and millimeters, but we really don't use decimeters all that much. Let's see. We talk about a decigram, centigram, and a milligram. And all of these decis mean one-tenth of the base unit. All of these centis mean one-tenth of the, sorry, one one-hundredth of the base unit. All of these millis mean one one-thousandth of the base unit. Now let's go in the opposite direction, shall we? We can have a decameter, which is ten times size of one meter. We can have a hectometer, which is 100 times the size of a meter. I know I didn't really space it all that well. Or we can have a kilometer, which is 1,000 times bigger than a meter. <clears throat> and it's the same for all of these other ones as well. We can have a Deciliter, hectoliter, kiloliter. We can have a decasecond, hectosecond, kilosecond. We can have a decagram, hectogram, kilograms. And all of these decas mean that they are 10 times bigger than the base unit. All of these hectos mean that they are 100 times bigger than the base unit. And all of these kilos mean they are 1,000 times bigger than the base unit. So that's the introduction. Let's do a few of these metric conversions. Now, I know a lot of times it gets kind of tricky when kids are first getting started because they might not remember exactly, all right, is it one one thousandth, one thousand, one one hundredth? Do I multiply? Do I divide? What's going on, Miss Colmar? So what we're going to do is until you get more confident in yourself, we're actually going to start with what we call the ladder method. Now that's what this is up here. Notice how it kind of looks like a sideways ladder. <clears throat> we're going to get started using this method. And I'll show you exactly how to do it. So let's say I want to start with six millimeters and I want to convert it to just plain meters. So I want to go from millimeters to the base unit. Now what we're going to do on our top part is we are going to do exactly what it's telling us. We're going to start at millimeter. So milli is our prefix. That means we're going to start right here. And we want to end at the base unit. How do I know it's a base unit? There's just one letter. There is no prefix. So that means I want to land right there. To get from here to here, I have to jump one, two, three spaces to the left. Now the nice thing about it is that actually tells us exactly what we have to do. We're going to take our six and we are going to move the decimal place, it, place of it three places to the left. Now, I don't see a decimal point in there. What does that mean? 
it means that it is at the end. If you don't see a decimal point, it is assumed to be at the end. Because, you know, not including accuracy in um, significant figures, 6.0 is essentially the same thing as 6, right? Just in terms of sheer value. Yeah. So if you don't see a decimal point, it's assumed to be at the end. So I'm going to move it three places to the left. One, two, three. And you see those two empty spaces? I'm going to fill it in with zeros. So six millimeters is the same thing as point zero zero six meters. So far so good? All right, let's do now. I want to go from 2.4 kilograms to grams. <clears throat> so this time I'm starting over here at kilo and I want to end up, one letter, no prefix, at my base unit. So what I have to do to get from here to here one, two, three. I have to move my decimal point three places to the right this time. So 2.4, I can see my decimal point this time. So I take that, I'm gonna move it three places to the right, just like we did up here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right there, fill in our zeros. So 2.4 kilograms is equal to 2,400 grams. All right? Not too bad, right? Not too bad. <clears throat> All right. Let's do a couple more. What if I want to go from, let's see, 13.5. Four decimeters to decameters. All right, let's figure this out. We're starting with the prefix D, which is deci, and we're going to end up at deca. So what we have to do to get from here to here, one, two. We're gonna move two places to the left. One, two. So 13.4 decimeters is equal to 0 0.134 decameters. All right, how about about um, why don't we start with a base unit this time? I'm gonna go three grams to centigrams. Alright, so we are starting at our base unit. There's no prefix. We're actually gonna start right here at the base unit. We're gonna end up at Centi. So do that. Base unit. One, two, two places to the right. Again, you don't see your decimal point. It's assumed at the end. One, two, fill in the zeros. Three grams is equal to 300 centigrams. All right, let's do one more. What if I want to go from 7.3 milligrams to, are you ready for this? Are you ready? You're ready? Yeah, you're ready for this. To milligrams. Dun, 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 dun. I know it's getting a little dark because the sun's finally coming out. I'm sorry about that. There we go. So if you want to go from here, milli, all the way to kilo. So let's take a look at that. Go 
One, two, three, four, five, six. I have to move my decimal point six places to the left. We have 7.3. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put in the decimal, fill in the zeros. So 7.3 milligrams is equal to 0 0.0000073 kilograms. Now that's not the only way to do it. There's quite a few different ways to do metric conversions. I'm just spending the most time on this way because it's usually the easiest way for kids to start feeling comfortable with it. Um, you can also do a form of dimensional analysis with it. Let's say I wanted it to go from six kilometers to millimeters. Yeah, it's kind of not very bright. I'm sorry. I mean, it's a little too bright, but not for the board. All right. So I want to go six kilometers to millimeters. Well, maybe I don't remember how this is set up, but I do remember some basic things. I know six kilometers and in one kilometer, there are 1,000 meters. And we know that because if you remember, we said that a kilometer is 1,000 times bigger. That means that 1,000 millimeters can fit into a kilometer. And in one meter, there are 1,000 millimeters. Because one meter is 1,000 times bigger than a millimeter, 1,000 millimeters can fit into it. Remember, millimeter is 1 1,000 the size of a meter, which means that if we flip around, a meter is 1,000 times bigger than one millimeter. All right, so cancel out. The above and below units are the same. Kilometers on top and bottom, that cancels out. Meters cancel out. And now we just multiply across. So 6 times 1,000 times 1,000 gives us 1 million over 1 times 1. And the only unit that left is that. So 6 kilometers equals 6 million meter, millimeters. And why don't we double check that up here? So we're going from kilometers to millimeters. <clears throat> so one, two, three, four, five, six. So six, one, two, three, four, five, six, fill in the zeros. It's the same. Now, if you're not quite ready for the dimensional analysis portion, that's fine. You don't have to worry about that. At least know how to use the ladder method, though. That will help you. Like I said, it's a great way to help you just kind of start to get comfortable with metric conversions. You'll find out later on in other classes and whatnot, there's many ways to do this. There's many ways to look at dimensional analysis. So this is just a way to kind of get you interested Oh, not interested because, you know, who doesn't want to live? I'm, I know, kids are silly. But sorry. There's just a way to kind of introduce it and help get you comfortable with it. So I hope to help. Um, in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay awesome. All right, you guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.